today we're going to be discussing the Knight's Tour problem. So before we begin, it's important to understand how knights move in chess. So in chess, knights move in an L shape. That means two boxes in one direction and one box in a perpendicular direction. And this has been demonstrated on the chessboard scene on the screen. We have a knight located at the center and the stars represent all the potential moves this knight could take. And a knight's graph is referred to a graph that represents all the legal moves that a knight can take on an M by N chessboard. And knight's graph can be for any dimensions. Um, however, if it, both N and M are larger than two, we know that the vertices are always, there's N times M vertices and the edges are four N times M minus six times M plus N plus eight. Now, using this knight's graph, we can propose the question that the knight's chore asks, knight's chore problem. It says, is there a sequence of legal moves on a chessboard that a knight could make such that they would only ever visit each square exactly once? And if you pose this in a graph theory question, um, this would say, is there a sequence of move steps one could take on a knight's graph that would result in each node being visited once and only once? Now, one can ask is what is the point of studying this question? Um, you know, I guess if you're interested in chess, this is an interesting, you know, kind of brain teaser, but, you know, it wouldn't help you win a chess game. And then what's the point? Um, and the reason is the Knight's Tour problem is an example of a Hamiltonian path problem and solving it, finding ways to solve it are essentially finding ways to find Hamiltonian paths. So as a reminder, Hamiltonian path is a path on a graph that visits every node once and only once. And a Hamiltonian cycle is a Hamiltonian, a special type of Hamiltonian path that starts and ends at adjacent nodes. So just to backtrack is the Knight's Tour problem is looking for a Hamiltonian path. Now it is interesting to consider a Hamiltonian cycle because in the Knight's Tour problem, that would mean that the last position the knight ended on is only one move away from the start position. And these are very interesting problems, or these are interesting when you can find these cycles, because that means you could directly traverse your graph, or in this case, the chessboard, an entire other time, only going each node over each node again once. Now, in the case of the knight's tour, this was what we would call a closed knight's tour, in contrast to what we call an open knight's tour, which is just that when the you have covered each space in the chessboard once and only once, but the spot you end on is not one step away from your start position. And for the sake of this presentation, we'll only be considering the open nights tour. So one can ask, how would one solve this? Um, and in 1823, there was a rule proposed by H. Warnsdorf that was a heuristic for finding a night's tour. And a heuristic is a set of rules one could follow that would result in the answer. And Warnstorff rule states that starting from any node, you move to the node that has the fewest number of further moves. And this is assuming that that node does not have zero moves left, and it does not count moves that would lead to previously visited nodes. And according to Warnstorff's rule, if there's a tie, i.e., um, two nodes you can move to have the same number of further nodes, that tie is broken arbitrarily. So to look at this a little more in detail, here's an example of a knight's graph. And each node is labeled with the number of moves you can take from that graph. So if we look here at this node three in the zoomed in section, what we call the kth node, it has a three on it, meaning it has three moves you can take from it. You can see, go to this four, this eight, or this six. So according to Warnstorff's rule, you're going to go to the node that has the least number of future nodes, which in this case would be this four. So if the three was your kth node, your kth plus one node in this sequence of steps would be the node labeled four. And after you move to that four, you would adjust all the neighboring nodes to indicate you can't reach that four anymore. So this node here that is labeled six would be reduced to five because that path to the four is no longer a valid path because from that six, you wouldn't want to move to that four. It's already been visited. Now, it's a important to note um, that not even in regard to Warren Zerf's rule, it is impossible to find a knight's tour on a graph that is 
less than five by five. Um, that's not regarding Warren's of rule. That's just an understanding from graph theory um, and understanding the problem of the Knight's Tor and the Knight's graph. But there's a problem with Warren's Dorf rule. And that is even considering graphs larger than five by five. So even just looking at eight by eight graph, a classic chessboard, when it was tried out starting at different squares on the board, it ended up failing in some cases. And we can also note that that rate of failure increased as N and M increased, as seen in this graph here, that the larger the graph was, the higher um, Warren's Dorf rule started to fail at. And to be clear, what we mean by failure is that they weren't able to find a Knight's tour. And the reason this was failing, because, you know, there are cases that they were able to find they know when Knight's Tour exists for that size of graph, and the reason it didn't work is due to this arbitrary tie-breaking. So in 1966, Ira Pohl um, came up with a method to deal with this arbitrary tie-breaking, and that was the idea that for each time move, you sum up the number of moves available to it at the next level, and then pick the move yielding a minimum. And this is referred to as second level tie breaking. And what this means is it's essentially applying Warren's rule to the next level to deal with tie breaking. So if you are at a node and it's two it has two nodes that have the same equal minimum, you're going to look at those nodes and apply Warren's rule to them at the next level to pick which one you would move to. Now, this method was successful in finding tours on an eight by eight board for all cases all starting notes, which was great. However, it still failed at times, especially with larger n by n, larger values of m and n. So there have been other extensions to Warnsdorf's rule that have tried to resolve this. In 1996, Squirrel and Call proposed a alternative to arbitrary tie-breaking called moving, the moving order method, which proved more successful than, you know, second level, um, ordering as discussed previously, but also ended up failing for high values of M and N. Beyond Warren Storff's rule, there's other methods that have been looked at for trying to find a Knight's Tour. Um, in 1992, there was an interesting method looking for Knight's Tours, thinking it as a neural network. And there've also been numerous other algorithms that have been either developed or algorithms that have been expanded upon to try to find a way to reliably and in a computationally concise manner find Knight's Tours. Because again, it's important to remember that we're able to find these Knight's Tours, but the problem is their computational speed um, in getting there. Um, thank you for listening to my presentation. I have included my references on this slide and I will be including them in the description.